Hello, people. Another beautiful day. Yep. Hope your five senses work. Health and strength is good. Or excellent. What? What's up, Steam Deck fans? Steam Deck Tribe, Steam Deck Nation, Steam Deck Universe, Steam Deck World, Steam Deck Legion, what's good? Steam Deck Mob, what's happening? Steam Deck Squad, what's up? And you Steam Deck nerds, geeks, and freaks, and you investigators, what's happening? Alright, I, I got you covered. I, I could talk about the Steam Deck too, but I'm going to do that in another video. But anyway, let me get these news out the way real quick. <clears throat> let's get let's get the ball moving here. Alright, what do we got? First thing up. Got to keep the Steam Deck fans up to date. They want to know what's going on with their beloved Steam Decks. So, I, I, it's my responsibility to get the news out. <laughs> anyway, look, um, okay, uh, let's see here. Valve fix up more Steam VR 2.0 beta issues. After once again making it safe to take off your headset, Valve puts another Steam VR 2.0 beta up, update focus on fixing up more problems and hopefully making it better. Here's the latest changes from October 4th. Steam VR show multitasking view button on desktop mode. Fix scaling issues with floating uh, dashboard overlay. Fix a set box, uh, oh, set skybox override. Always showing only the latest texture. Speed up initial loads of web views settings etc. Fix issues causing by running VR startup from a different uh, VR install when Steam VR is already running. For further laser pointer double click refinements. Laser pointers no longer jump when you switch input device. Laser pointer is more consistent when dragging outside of overlay. Typing emojis works in desktop uh, view. Uh, move dashboard slightly further away. Okay, now for Linux. Uh, fix new VR gamepad user interface rendering with a flip Y axis. Fix runtime configuration to launch in Steam Linux runtime. 3.0 Sniper, addressing startup issues on some systems. Fix VR Compositor to launch under Legacy uh, Scout runtime, addressing startup issues on some system. Fix VR Home to launch under Legacy Scout runtime. It says, sadly, the changes don't seem to have solved Steam VR 2.0. Beta working for me, it's just won't, it just won't load up noted in the bug report it says hopefully valve will find a cause of what's stopping it working on some linux systems like mine so i actually go through full testing of it with my index because otherwise it's an expensive paperweight right now <laughs> yeah all right that's for steam vr uh, 2.0 all right now what's next let's see here uh what else we got okay dwarf uh, fortress yeah, Dwarf Fortress, Dwarf Fortress. <laughs> All right, says here, uh, Dwarf Fortress fixes crashing on Linux, gets an adventure mode and roadmap. All right, you Dwarf lovers, you ready? All right, good news for Val, good news for Dwarf Fortress players on Steam. As a refresh update went out recently that should stop some crashing issues on Linux. There's a roadmap for adventure mode to go through if you miss it. The native Linux version was released recently. Okay, it says uh, first for October 3rd uh, update. Major bug fixes. Door Fortress. Fix crash on Linux related to game log threading. Fix broken tutorials on click workshop steps. Stop tutorial prompt in tiny worlds where tutorials is invalid. Clean up a source of squad schedule corruption. Make classic graphics setting works properly on restart. Hopefully for for real this time. <laughs> Other bug fixes and tweaks. Fix potential problems with doctor versus multiple hospitals. <laughs> Ballista arrow etc. That chops down trees count for tr uh, tree cap diplomacy. Image set with non-uniform types now properly display as having a variety of types. Uh, says here generic improvement now properly display. Make made a masterful improvement. In histories, allow single pair dance to generate properly. Fix potential minor oddity involve animal placement. Hmm. And then it says, as for the adventure mode, the roadmap is still some way off, and they're hoping to have it out not too late next year. With the new art style, they're starting with the basic, which will be a travel map. We have the world map. 
but sites needs hundreds of sprites to match up with the axis that shows individual streets. We, we will be iterating on this until launch. Main interface layout. Uh, similar to fortress mode, there are tiles based action information menus and other actions like travel. There's also a daylight cycle. We will have a mini map this time around. Procedural portraits. We need to implement Carolyn great portrait for the human, elves, dwarves, goblins, <laughs> kobolds, uh, and also get animal people displayed. <laughs> every animal, every animal person. <laughs> they said they they once said they're down for the framework. They will work on supporting mouse keyboard for all playstyle. They say it will be quite challenging though, since there's so many ways people can interact with it from clicking around the play area through the button hotkey or via full list. Several action for each. After that, they're also going through and implement a lot more likes. Inventory. <clears throat> this for inventory. It says here, equipping items and containers are the trickiest part here. You can wear multiple uh, shirts, nest containers as deep as you like, and the new interface will have to handle this with both keyboard and mouse. Combat. Striking, striking and wrestling. Wrestling will be a bit of a doozy as there are a lot of physical Ano, ano, anatomical uh, complexi complexity that we're not sure how best to communicate. Conversation. This includes supporting current adventure mode system to interleaving speech and actions and having three or more participants in a conversation. Character generator. You can make a whole party in adventure mode and the character creation options are complex. We have we have to update this system. Yeah. So yeah, door fortress. Yeah, they're they're not playing around here. <laughs> yeah. Especially especially when since the Steam Deck came out, man, <laughs> it's been update central. All right, here's another one for you. Uh, here's another one. Swords of Freeport is a text mode social RPG like Retro Mud BBS door game. <laughs> All right, let's see what they're talking about here. Okay, it says. Now, this is a certain retro that slightly older reader might be interested in. Swords of Freeport is a new text mode social RPG, heavily inspired by the style of bulletin board system door games back in the 90s. And it says developer Alyssa Black mentioned they were inspired by classic games like Legend of Red Dragon. It is part mud and part BBS game without the need for a BBS. While it's a single player game, the game, it does have some social aspect. Like seeing, like seeing others progress via in-game new board. You can chat using in-game message board in taverns. You can see when others are logged in, but no PvP. It's all for social reasons. Yeah. And what is it? What is it? it uh, the features are retro, retro play once a day style mechanics. Three core starting professions with option for cross uh, skilling. A whole city and countryside around it explore, and it says witty, smart humor throughout the game. All 24 characters and many words of English language are used to evoke the feeling of really being in a squalid uh, Victorian adjacent fantasy city. Addictive turn based gameplay, which limits how much time you can sink into it. Look, it, look, it has the blo bloatable you want. You want to hurt a bloatable, don't you? <laughs> anyway, subjective. But anyway, that's the game. And this this game is called uh, Swords of Freeport. All right. Now, what's the other one? Keep the ball over here. Okay. Retro shooter, retro uh, shooter. Dusk is getting a full, free HD uh, revamp. And it says uh says you're coming around the five year anniversary. Dusk HD is going to be a big full visual remaster of the very popular shooter. So here's what they said about it. It's a free update that will update everything, including enemies, weapons, all models, textures, everything they say will be improved. Around Halloween, we can expect to get a trailer showing an on-off comparison with a full launch 
along with their modding SDK and Steam Workshop support around the five year anniversary, which would be December 10th. And it says the good news is that it will be entirely optional as the HD content will be available via Steam Workshop as free download so you can keep it as it is, as it is if you prefer it. You'll be able to use the old or new HD assets for modding to and upload your own creation. And that's Dust HD. I and mean, you can get that from the Humble Store, GOG, Steam.com. All right. Now, what's what's the what's the next news I got for you, little Steam Deck nerds and Linux gamers? All right. Let's see here. What else we got? Uh, Minecraft Live. Hmm. You're you, you're voting for the penguin, right? <laughs> I thought, you know what I thought with Minecraft? They were gonna add the duck duck mob to the to, to Minecraft. But anyway, <laughs> look, Linux game Linux Linux gamers, it's your time to shine. Minecraft Live Minecraft Live is coming up again on October 15th, where Mahjong will do another vote on what mob to add next. So obviously, you're going to vote for the penguin, right? Okay, the choice this time are a penguin, crab. Or armadillo voting for the event begins at 1 p.m. EDT slash 5 p.m. UTC October 13th and runtime 1 1 15 p.m. EDT uh, slash uh, 5 5 15 p.m. Uh, UTC on uh, October 15th to vote you can do so on Minecraft website via the official launcher last year's winner was the sniffer added into Minecraft the, t the Trails and Tales update. Yeah. <laughs> October 15th. Minecraft. Alright, what else I got for you? Keep the ball moving here. Alright, alright, alright. What's next? Okay, the Humble Store. We got some deals for you. Deals, games, and updates. <laughs> anyway, sitting here messing with y'all. Alright. What else I got for you? Let's see. Whoops. Where, 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 where is... Uh, Where's uh, the humble st humble choices? All right, remember remember it's Halloween season, so okay. What do we got for humble? Let's see here. The Query Deluxe Edition. Hmm. Uh, the Dark Picture Anthology House of Ashes. Hmm. Rebel Ink Escalation. Metal Hellsinger. A Juggler's Tale. Spirits of the Island. Lords and Villains. Mister uh, Prepper. Yeah. And these are all from the Humble Store. So yeah, check them out <laughs> for October. <laughs> anyway, all right, let's keep the ball moving here. What else we got? Okay, any, any more news to get to? Okay, we got that part done. Oh, ter, ter, Terra says here, Terra uh, nails get better performance and Linux support. Hmm. That's T-E-R-R-A. Terra nails. A building game about restoring nature just upgrade with better performance. They're now officially released their native Linux and Mac OS version 2. I thoroughly loved the early builds of Terra Nils before they turned it into a full-fledged game. So I will at some point be checking it out. And it seems waiting, waiting on it has paid off with all the improvements. So let's see here. What's the features? In addition to the Linux slash Mac OS support, what else change? See, Mac gamers play video games. Do not let that iPhone fool you. Okay? All right. Performance. Okay. Combining meshes, LODs, reduce draw calls for some materials, speed up load times by pre-computing ashes, improve, improve tile highlighting, rework tile rules, pre-computing texture uh, atlases remove a significant amount of crud from gameplay uh, tiles more water uh, quad works gameplay in tile optimization polish and bug fixes improve edge panning and capturing the cursor use more exact numbers of whether seeds should get uh, ticked in seed banks fix uh, sunflower radiation uh, soft lock add screen shake toggle settings off-screen uh, recycling arrows are now on a ellipse, uh, so not overlapping the user interface. Had, had a 
cover tool tips text from zone mode changing buildings tabs doesn't count as hovering show speed controls when the first vehicle spawn if because tier if before tier 3 click behind the handbook to close it clicking on uh, background of seed bank close it fix bugs where you can close handbook while it's opening add a monorail dirt uh, transport vehicle for dredging fix bamboo nursery change to skyscraper correctly on on do fix a bug where water would show at the wrong height when evac ev es no, I was gonna say evacuate evacuating when excavating a cliff tile fix a bug where a building can sometimes have ghost <laughs> the developer also tested some bigger more exciting changes for upcoming updates and more news to come on that and yeah so Terra Niels yeah <clears throat> That's, and um, <clears throat> says uh, back in 2023 the developer also announced they donated 95,000 to the endangered wildlife trust thanks to sales from Terra Nils and you can find Terra Nils on where humble store gog steam yeah <clears throat> all right anything else on the news front on the news front all right let's see we got that there's an article here about gigantic so let me, let me throw that in there okay here let's see here throw that in there gigantic <laughs> yeah gotta, gotta keep you steam get steam deck fans up to date on what's going on okay let's see here but i will talk about the steam deck too next though uh let's see mm. oh here we go this from game developer i just seen i've seen this earlier oh it says in a rear move gearbox <laughs> Gearbox revived Gigantic for a limited time. Gearbox is briefly bringing back the disfunct hero shooter so it can experience by players for the first time in half a decade. I don't know why they took it down in the first place. You know, over five years after it was shut down, Mode Gigantic is being briefly brought back online from tomorrow, October 5th to Saturday, October 7th. The disfunct online game will be playable once more <laughs> and this week gearbox uh, publishing sent out emails to players promising a limited time throwback event the event is more than a simple retreat game developer obtained the email which noted the revival will include new features specifically for occasional included update tutorials and a wholly new progression system online games holds limited time events fairly regularly but it's a rare for a game that seemed discontinued for years to be brought back online again by by right holder at this time of writing gearbox hasn't explained why it's choosing to do so i think i think gearbox is part of that uh that embracer situation that's why they're doing it to see what's what's the response going to be you know see these developers they um These developers, they, 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 um, they can, they know, they, 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 they know that they can bring games back online if they want to. And this is a perfect, ex perfect example of it. So, for them to be doing this now, uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, I guess they're doing it to see what's the, what's the user situation is going to be before they make an an another announcement about it, but. You know, like the saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, so they should have kept it online, you know. You got a user base for it. Just saying. So, other than that, that's all the news I got to report on the Steam Deck, though. As far as, like, deals, games, and updates. Yeah. Steam Deck. I try to keep you guys posted on up on uh, what's going on. See, when I, when I get up, I'll be all over looking for information. And once I find it. I try to present it to you, you know, <laughs> sometimes I'm the first one to it, sometimes I'm not, you know, so, yeah, <laughs> uh, that's what, that's what, that's what, that's what I do when I get up, so, yeah, I always try to put some, put something out, you know, and, um, 
and then go from there. But there's another article from Gaming on Linux talking about uh, the Steam Deck 2. I'm going to do that in another video. Okay. Okay. Hope you, hope you enjoyed the video. Nice talking to you people again. Chris, still Star Wars and Star Trek playing. Bored, dark side.